Contrivances are the biggest challenge faced by a writer, and often these are the most common self-inflicted injuries that authors make upon their own work when they're writing their book. So today, let's explore what they are, why they're so important, and how we can avoid them when writing. Simply, a contrivance is something that breaks the immersion of the reader. And it can be something that is highly unbelievable, highly unlikely, or something that breaks the rules within the world that have already been established. Essentially, these make the reader feel that the storyteller has been lazy, that they've cut a corner or taken a shortcut in order for the plot to move forward, and that they haven't really put a lot of thought into how to progress the story. There are three main contrivances, so let's look at them each individually and how we can prevent each one. The first and most common contrivance is made by the writer in order to take a shortcut to the next part of the story, either because they've written themselves into a corner or they couldn't think of a creative solution to a problem. Great examples of this are characters teleporting great distances just to be involved in the story. It can also be introducing previously unmentioned convenient characters, abilities or objects that help the protagonist escape from difficult situations. This breaks audience immersion because the rules that govern the world have been broken for no apparent reason. Writers often do this to maintain the pace of their novel, or to ensure an outcome that they want, regardless of the logical inconsistencies. This is often seen towards the end of a book, where a writer isn't sure how to reach the conclusion they want naturally, so they have a character act out of character, have an undeserved change of heart, or they have a sudden convenient intervention from a previously unmentioned force. This severely damages the trust the reader has for what they're seeing, makes the consequences and outcomes seem undeserved, and leaves them deeply unsatisfied. More than that, it can often pit the audience and the storytellers against one another, which is never a good thing. Avoiding this first contrivance rests on three basic principles. First of all, you need to establish the rules within your world early, and you have to follow them. Don't go breaking the rules just because it's inconvenient for you to continue the story forward. That seems to be a result of bad planning. So there's no point jeopardizing your entire story and the reader's integrity and trust in your book just to get a quick ending or a quick shortcut. No, you need to establish rules early and you need to obey them. This forces you to think of creative solutions or go back and rewrite your work. The second thing that you need to do is you need to establish the character's skills, motivations and traits and stick to them, or have them change and develop naturally through the established rules of your world. There's nothing worse for a reader than having a character suddenly change heart or suddenly change without any apparent reason or any of their background indicating that this was going to happen. Third, understand that solutions, conclusions and stories don't need to be perfect, neat and tidy without any rough edges. The most important thing for you as a writer is to be consistent in the way that you portray your story and character. Taking shortcuts damages your credibility as a writer, and it hurts the immersion of the reader. The second form of contrivance are distorted expectations. Some writers have tried to explain these away as subverted expectations, but often these have logically failed. This form of contrivance is where story elements have led the audience in a direction for the extent of the story and then flip the expectation for the simple impact of being surprising or shocking. It's connected to our first point and could be done by the writer to create a shortcut, but is often done just to surprise or have something interesting happen in the story. The reason this is such a critical failure is because setup is so important. The journey characters embark on, their motivations and intentions are 95% of a story, and to have those suddenly distorted leaves an extremely bitter taste in the reader's mouth. This usually occurs because a writer has not set up conclusions properly, they have not left hints for what will happen or correctly developed their characters and foreshadowed unexpected circumstances. There's nothing wrong with surprise twists, but they need to be visible when we experience something for the second time too. The twist in The Usual Suspects is extremely famous, but the hints are all there to be found by the audience as they're watching. If Agent Kujin had been revealed to be Soze, it would have subverted our expectations, sure, but left us bitter and unsatisfied. It would have made no sense on second viewing either. Having characters suddenly acting differently, sudden twists, 
bluffing of character deaths, excessive red herrings, changing the rules of your world, or forcing in a new character that moves the story in a different direction, all fall into this contrivance, and do nothing except sow divisions between the audience and the storyteller. Preventing this contrivance basically has three simple rules, which is writing consistently, following the plan that you've made, and putting in effort to foreshadow and drop hints about future events. George R. R. Martin said this perfectly. You know, if you've planned your book that the butler did it, and then you read an internet, someone has figured out that the butler did it, and you suddenly change in midstream and it was the chambermaid who did it, mm. then you screw up the whole book because you get these, this foreshadowing early on and you've got these little clues you planted, now they're dead ends and you have to introduce other clues and you're retconning, it's a mess. And this perfectly sums up why you need to follow this rule. Your readers are always trying to predict what's going to happen. They're always looking for the next surprise. So for it to be genuine, it needs to have a trail of hints leading up to it. It needs to have steps that lead to a logical conclusion. Doing things randomly just for the sake of surprise and subverting the expectations is in fact distorting the expectations of the reader and will make them unhappy with your work. So just be careful and make sure you avoid this one. The third form of contrivance is about the information you give to the reader. This is related to the previous two points, but does stand slightly apart. Essentially, you want to make sure your reader is given all the information they would reasonably expect to know from this perspective. If they're following a detective, for example, but are not told about all the evidence the character collected, they will feel robbed when the detective solves the crime and reveals they knew something else all along that the reader just wasn't informed of. There's nothing wrong with your reader figuring out the plot and the ending. As Martin said, you can't just change the ending to subvert their expectations. Similarly, you can't withhold information they would expect to have, just to prevent them from reaching that conclusion until you say it's time. Once again, this damages the trust between the reader and the author. The information held can be a lot of different things, ranging from plot critical information like evidence, to character information like motivations and beliefs. All of this can misinform the audience about the story and what they can expect by the end of it. This connects back to the first two points, as holding back information is a shortcut to build tension by the writer, but also distorts the expectation the reader has and ultimately damages that relationship. This contrivance again can be avoided quite simply by just being consistent with the way that you write. Try and put yourself in the shoes of the reader and think about what you would reasonably expect to have access to and what information you wouldn't want to be withheld by the time you reach the end of the book. Again, it's just about being honest. If you feel that your story is too easy to predict, then go back to the drawing board, replan it and make it more complicated. But don't lie to your audience and withhold information that they would reasonably expect to have. So the real takeaway from this should be five rules that you can use to avoid all of these contrivances. The first one is establishing rules within your world from the beginning and making sure that you especially obey them to avoid yourself being tempted to take shortcuts. The second one is making sure that you're writing consistently. Don't change the tone or character behaviors just to suit yourself, again, to avoid taking those shortcuts that make your work feel cheap. The third one is making sure that you establish who your characters are, their beliefs, and their motivations, and this will help you write them consistently. The fourth one is making sure that you don't lie to your reader. Make sure that you're honest with the information that they would reasonably expect to have. And number five is don't be afraid to go back and change that story. You don't have to have perfect endings for everything and perfect ways out of every situation. It's okay to go back and rework what you're doing to make it more convincing, to make it deeper, to add in those twists that you want. Don't be afraid to go back and edit things and change things. It's your book. It's your right to go back and do that. So if you've enjoyed today's video, then please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video with your friends because it really helps the channel grow. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next week.